This episode of Reason Africa was made possible by our fans on Patreon. If you'd like to support us to keep producing quality content, please consider supporting our channel on patreon.com slash Reason Africa. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome aboard Congo Airways Flight 4B7. We are currently far in line for takeoff and are expected to be in the air in approximately 15 minutes time. Please turn off all personal electronic devices including laptops and cell phones as we will be taking off shortly. Thank you for choosing Congo Airways. Our flight time today is 5 minutes. That was fun. I've always wanted to do that. I hope you didn't actually switch off your electronic devices guys. Twice every week, there is a flight between two ridiculously close cities. They are in fact arguably the world's closest capital city, Kinshasa of the Democratic Republic of Congo and Brazzaville of the confusingly similarly named Republic of Congo. As far as the unbelievably short 5-minute flight goes, it is the shortest international airline route in the world, separated only by a 8-kilometer 5-mile distance. The proximity of these two cities is just a hop across the Congo River that separates the twin countries. Contrary to what the names of these two countries suggest, the Congos are very distinct nations. Frequent viewers of the channel know I am fascinated by the Congos and have talked about them quite a bit recently. First, the strange tale of the two countries and second, what if the two Congos united into one country? After casting a wider net with much finer mesh, it appears the chances of the two Central African neighbors uniting is extremely unlikely. Here's why. First, the colonizations that happened in the Congos were really different and left different scars on the collective mind of the two territories. The geography of the Congo Basin was of crucial significance in the late 19th century when France and Belgium established rival colonies on the banks of River Congo. Upstream, the river broadens and is navigable deep into the interior, but below, the rapids and cataracts all the way to the Atlantic Ocean 450 kilometers away, the Congo is impassable. Ivory, rubber and other commodities could be brought as far as the rapids but no further. To bypass them, each built a railway to the ocean. The Belgians built theirs on the southern bank in the 1890s. The French followed 30 years later on the northern side of the bank. The tracks of the railway began at the last possible point where goods could be carried by ships, the current sites of Kinshasa and Brazzaville. The birthright of the cities is therefore suspicion, which later turned to rivalry. For nearly 150 years, the two countries have been divided by their shared origins and the famous river which runs between them. The divisions between the twin cities are a legacy of European imperialism created by colonial powers as it has done elsewhere across Africa. Each colonial power exploited its colonies according to its own objectives and values. That has been a major influence on the two cities and their relationship. The two peoples became almost enemies and remained so with an uneasy relationship until today. The river, which was once a bridge, became a wall. Economically speaking, though both countries are very much in the developing stage, the Republic of Congo is vastly better off than the DRC in terms of income of the average citizen. Congo Kinshasa's GDP per capita is only 587.51 US dollars, while Congo Brazzaville's is three times higher on average in this regard, with a GDP per capita of 2,500. 228.24 US dollars. This means that the Republic of Congo will have to bear the expense of raising living standards in the much larger Democratic Republic of Congo. I imagine the Congolese taxpayer would have a lot to say about that, especially since this would be a massive undertaking that would cripple their own economy. Don't forget 
the Democratic Republic of Congo's size and natural riches completely outweigh the Republic of Congo's. In terms of future prospects of economic development, the DRC could be better off in the future and would be hard-pressed to share the insane untapped resource wealth estimated at 24 trillion US dollars. With a surface area equivalent to that of Western Europe, the Democratic Republic of Congo is the largest country in sub-Saharan Africa. The country is endowed with exceptional natural resources, including minerals such as cobalt and copper, hydropower potential, significant arable land, immense biodiversity, and the world's second largest rainforest. In short, the economic issues are no easy fix. As such, merging the two economies would wreak hardships many times worse than when East and West Germany united in 1990. The political landscapes of the two countries are also largely different. One key factor was the Cold War. Congo Brazza's leader upon independence was Fulbert Yulu. His government prompted a revolution in 1963 that installed a socialist government, which was succeeded by an explicitly Marxist regime in 1969 that lasted into the 1990s. Congo Kinshasa's top independence figure was Patrice Lumumba, who served as the country's first prime minister. A fair amount of intrigue involving Western intelligence agencies, secessionists, and corrupt officials led to his execution in 1961. Later, a 1965 coup brought to power an infamous dictator, Mobutu Sese Seko, who operated a pro-West country capitalist regime before he was toppled in 1997. Congo Brazza's current president is Denis Sasso Nguesso. He was previously president from 1979 to 1992. During his first period as president, he headed the single-party regime of the Congolese Party of Labour, PCT, for 12 years. During the Cold War, the country broke diplomatic relations with the United States, leaning towards the Soviet camp. Nguesso ran for president in the 1992 presidential election, but was defeated, relegated to opposition leader for five years. But he regrouped and went on to win the 1997 elections. He has been president ever since. The current president of Congo Kinshasa is Felix Chisekedi. The election in 2019 marked the first peaceful transition of power since the state became independent from Belgium in 1960. Political analysts agree that Joseph Kabila, Chisekedi's predecessor, will continue to wield and retain great power in the mineral-rich country. Son of former President Laurent Kabila, the man who deposed Mobutu Sese Seko, the 50-year-old Kabila led the vast African nation for nearly two decades. A supposed attempt in 2011 on Kabila's life, blamed on the northern neighbors, led to a major breakdown in diplomatic relations between the two countries. This could be far-fetched, but some sources say there is a very likely chance that Kabila could be a candidate in the next election. While the DRC has adopted presidential term limits, Republic of Congo's President Mweso does not appear eager to vacate his post. How does one reconcile these two different political landscapes, leadership, opposition, and all? Given that President Nguesso's priority is safeguarding his regime, it's unlikely the Republic of Congo will agree to unification on terms that would herald its own demise. As you can bet, the DRC will not be eager to go back to its history of totalitarianism. Mending the political divide remains a huge sticking point. Add to that, Congo Brazza's law is based on the French legal system. Congo Kinshasa's is structured on Belgian's traditions. Which one is to prevail should both countries come together? One redeeming option may be some form of one country, two systems arrangement, similar to how China and Hong Kong have two unique political systems under the umbrella of the same nation. However, 
It's sad to point out, but the Democratic Republic of Congo has challenges trying to bring peace, establish law and order in some volatile parts of the country, much less considering mergers with other neighboring states. The eastern portion of the country has been the site of constant conflict for the past 20 years, and based on this, Congo Brazzaville would not be easily convinced to attach itself to the DRC. Despite the political tensions between the two capitals, the massive Congo River to this day has no bridge. Feasibility studies are reportedly being carried out for a 4-kilometer, $1.65 billion road and rail bridge linking the hearts of Brazzaville and Kinshasa, and maybe it could serve to bring the two countries closer. Although the Congos may share near-identical names and quite similar cultures, at no time were they one country. Tensions are far from the situation between North and South Korea, but the two Congos have some sort of rivalry which has made unification less and less likely. As always guys, if you'd like to have a better understanding of Africa, start now by subscribing and you'll be on your way. A very special thank you to our patrons. Your support is truly invaluable. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you next time.